Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and being glad in it. Good morning, Palestine United Methodist Church. Good morning, Facebook Live world. It's a good day to be alive. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, as I was thinking over the course of this week, I was thinking about the situation that this world is in, and then it dawned upon me that this was Black History Month. Amen. Black History Month. And uh, not only are we as a black race making history, have made history, we are still making history every day. And it's funny how things that we have been fighting for 200 years ago, we're still fighting for now. Amen. Amen. That let me know that America, we do have a race problem. Amen. Amen. But that's another story. Amen. Black History Month is an annual observance. And it originated in the United States, right here. And it's also known as African American History Month. It has received official recognition from governments in the United States and Canada. And more recently, it has been observed in Ireland, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. It will be observed from February the 1st, 2021 to Monday. Monday, March the 1st, 2021. Let's not only remember uh, those national black historians, let's remember the, those that are local in our community and the ones that uh, paved the way for us in our surrounding areas. And as we uh, go out the course of this month, let us try to pull up something, read something every day or every week about the, the blacks that have come through and made the way for us. And in the coming weeks, got a young man here I know going to be excited to bring you a sermon on this month. Amen. Amen. But that's another story. Good morning, Palestine United Methodist Church, Facebook Live. Amen. This is a day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and being glad in it. This is the good news of the gospel. Amen. Would you pray with me? Let us pray. Father God, how wonderful to know that you have provided all that is necessary to live a godly life in Christ Jesus. Your grace truly is sufficient to supply whatever needs and necessities we may have to face and thank you that no matter how difficult the circumstances that arise in our life, nor how lonely the path may get to be, your grace is sufficient for your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Father God, I pray that you will provide all that we need to face today and that you would renew our strength within us and we rest in your love. Strengthen us in every way, I pray, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And thank you, Father, for your wonderful promise that they that wait upon you shall have their spirit renewed and mount up with wings like eagles. Thank you, Lord, and praise your holy name that you are our strength and our God. We pray for all the sick, all the shed in, all the bereaved families, which are many, Lord. We pray right now, Lord, that you renew a right spirit within us. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, church. Amen. This morning we're going to go right on into the word, but before we do that, I like to say uh, uh, the pandemic committee 
of the United Methodist Church. Uh, they recommendation hadn't changed as for gathering. Amen. And if you are to gather, you are supposed to keep it 10 or less with the adequate uh, building, the adequate surroundings, with the adequate room. As you know here in Palestine, we are, we are wanting to come back because uh, we love praising God. We love coming together as a church band. But right now, uh, without enough room, it's not safe. And our commitment is to do no harm. And we actually would be doing harm to one another if we claim, came together in a corporate manner of worship right now. So we are to worship what we are and what we're doing. And, and God is still in the midst of this situation. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, we're going to get in the word and the word is going to help us out on what we're going through. Uh, our scripture reading today will be coming from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 21 through 31. Isaiah 40, 21 through 31. And it reads, have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spread them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their hosts and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. No one, not one, is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint nor grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and he strengthens the powerless. Even you, will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of God for the people of God. Just want to use for a thought just for a moment. Strength for the weary in troubling time. Strength for the weary in troubling time. Here in this scripture this morning, Isaiah was writing to the Hebrew exiles in Babylon. They had been there in exile for a couple of generations. And back home in Jerusalem, the temple had been demolished. Their houses lay in ruins. The people, they were depressed and apathetic. Optimism was in a short supply. God was preparing a highway in the desert in order to bring the people home, but they doubted. They doubted that they would have enough strength 
to make the journey. Even young people who should have been eager for the adventure, they were even disheartened. Yes, yes. Even you will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. It is a sad picture indeed, church. It is a sad picture, a picture of an exhausted and weary people. Now, now, now look, isn't that how many of us feel today? Don't many of us feel right now exhausted and weary? Well, I can talk about myself. I can talk about myself. I know myself. Sometimes right now, I feel real weary. I, I know that I haven't been as active as I usually am. And, and sometimes I, I want to sleep a little bit more long. Sometimes my day goes and I don't even have an alarm to wake me around me. And, and i just been feeling quite tired. And, and I talk to many, I talk to people at work, I talk to other preachers, and, and they say that they feel the same way. But I, I found out that the weariness that I'm feeling is not a physical weariness. I found out that the weariness that I'm feeling is a, a spiritual and a mental weariness. I sit around and then, then the news come on, and, and, and the evening news, it weighs heavily on my mind and in my spirit. And, and I found myself being saddened by, by all the situations going on in the world, all the, all the racial conflict, all, all, all the people that have caught the coronavirus, the illness, the one who had died to death everywhere. And then I began to wonder, how long? How long will this continue to go on? I think about how we, we, we need us a sanctuary. We, we need a, a worship place where we can come as a corporate body of Christ, come together and worship God. But right now, we're still at a standstill. I, I think about what would the spring bring? What would the summer bring? What will 2021 bring? Signs of light. And signs of hope are sometimes hard to discern, church. One day things seem to be looking up, and then the next day it's all doom and gloom. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I done lost control in many ways. And I believe we really have lost control. We, we feel this place. We feel almost like exiles in a strange place. We're suffering from mental fatigue, church. It's not our bodies, but it's our minds and our spirits that are overloaded. Like the Hebrew exiles, that Isaiah was writing to, we have become weary and exhausted. Come on, somebody. So right now, this is a time to hear the words of God spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Right now, right where you are, these words that he spoke then are for us too right now today. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Come on and listen to the word. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now these great words spoken by the prophet contain both an invitation and a promise. And right now we acting on the invitation. The invitation we receive right now what God has promise. The invitation is they who wait upon the Lord. Now, now, when I say wait, it may be not welcomed by somebody right now, especially in these days that we already been waiting, but don't miss. 
Don't miss why you wait what God is doing in this period. Our patience may be running low. And yes, we are doing what we can do to stay safe. We're doing what we can do to, to look after others and protect others. All that, what we're doing is good. But mainly we are waiting rather impatiently. We're waiting impatiently until these dark days are past and, and, and we can get back to some normal degree of life. What we call normal, but I truly think there will never be a normal anymore. But right now, in whatever time that we're waiting in, there is a great value in waiting upon God. And so God invites us this morning. He invites you, Palestine. He invites you, Facebook Live, to wait upon him. And, and to wait upon God doesn't mean just sitting down on your do-gooder. It means spending time in God's presence. It means spending time in God's word. It means spending time just like we're doing right now. All the worship, all the preachers on Facebook Live, there is no excuse for you not to be sitting in God's presence somewhere, somehow this morning. When life is smooth and, and we kind of tend to be self-sufficient, you know, it, it's all about me kind of life. We depend on ourselves and all our own resources. But these times remind us of our dependence on God. In our weariness and exhaustion, we learn that our human resources are not sufficient. We learn that in time like we're going through right now that we really and truly, we need God. So we can use these days. We can use these days that we're in to wait upon God. Even more than usual, we can seek his truth in the word and his presence and prayer and worship. We are invited to wait upon God with a sense of dependence. Lord, I'm depending on you. And it's an invitation given to us by Jesus himself. Jesus is saying, come unto me, all of you who are weary and heavenly burden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is calling you to himself. Take those burdens. Take that weary body, that weary mind, that weary spirit. Take it to Jesus, and he will give you rest. It's an invitation this morning. Jesus teaches that the God on whom we wait, he has drawn very near to us. He is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And he has made himself known as the father who knows and loves and cares for each and every one of us. God does not faint. God does not grow weary. The psalmist says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And through participating in this act of worship or waiting, we have accepted God's invitation to wait upon him. Are you waiting up on him this morning, church? Have you accepted God's invitation to wait upon him? Isaiah tells us to wait upon God. And now comes the promise of those who wait upon the Lord. The promise is the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And God fulfilled that promise for the Hebrew exile, strengthening them to walk among the wilderness highway back home again. Then strengthening them yet again.
for the rebuilding of the nation in the temple. Isaiah tells us God is great in strength. Isaiah said God is mighty in power. God pours out his strength and power for his people and always he pours it out in love. So right now, right now, right now, where we are, there is a great exchange taking place as we wait on God. God is taking our weariness right now. Thank you, Jesus. He's taking it up upon himself. And right now, don't you feel the power? Don't you feel the strength coming over you right now? You are being strengthened at this very moment. Because God is not a man that he shall lie. If God said he will strengthen you, you know the Bible says it says an eagle. Mount up like wing like eagle. And we can see an eagle when he flies up in the air. It flies and he looks all over the countryside. It looks wide and long. God has strengthened us to mount up as eagles. And that is what we need today. We need to look wide and long beyond the current struggles we're going through. And we need to keep a longer view in mind. We need to remember the great future God has prepared for his people and the whole creation. Now, now, now evil is a strong power, but lift up your eyes and see now. God is at work. And God is not finished. Uh-uh. He's not through. No one. No one is equal to the Holy One of Israel. He is the God who raised his son from the grave. Lovingly. He is working out his purposes. God is lifting us on eagle's wings and enabling us right now to see from a higher, a better, and an eternal perspective. Don't miss that now. A eternal perspective. We're just sojourners here. We're just passing through. This is not our home. We have gotten think to the place where we think that we're here forever. But we're just passing through. God is also renewing our strength so that we can run and walk with perseverance, they shall run, he said, and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Along with patience, perseverance is needed. Mark in these days right here. As the scripture tells us, let us run with perseverance. The race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And God has given us the strength to do the very thing, this very thing, as we wait upon him right now. Wait upon God right now. He has given us strength to perse persevere. He has given us strength to run and not to be weary, to walk and not faint. As I get ready to close this morning, I think about every day, day in, Day out, mostly the same routine. Two week days, two week nights of Toyota. Going in, working, coming back home, sitting down for a moment, eating, taking a bath, going to bed, getting up, doing the same thing again. But when Sunday comes, oh Lord, thank you, Jesus. When Sunday comes, I get a chance to come right here in this place. I come here and I unpack all the bags that I have carried along this week. I unpack them right here. And just for a few moments, I get prayer and I get the relaxation of the Spirit of God right here in this place. And when I leave here, I leave here renewed. I leave here with a renewed in energy and I have a renewed determination. I have waited upon God and he has renewed my strength. I think about Jesus 
in the garden of Gethsemane. Yes, Lord. I think about the night before his crucifixion. The Bible says his sweat mingled with blood. It mingled with blood as he poured out his heart to God. He poured out in anguish over what was to come. He was there just praying, Lord Jesus, what am I to do? Lord Jesus, but what it be, not my will, but it be your will. Let your will be done. And as the blood mingled with sweat, you'll find these words in the Bible, Luke, in the book of Luke. Write it down. For you can go and look at it for yourself. Luke 22 in the 43rd verse, it says, and then an angel, come on somebody, from heaven appeared to him, giving him strength. Jesus waited upon God and God renewed his strength. And Jesus rose up with determination. And he went forth. He went forth for you. He went forth for me. He went to that old rugged cross. And they hung him high. They strung him out. And he died. He died. All because of you and me and the strength that God gave him. That he was able to press a bill. He died for our eternal salvation. These are difficult days. These are difficult days. And let me stand here and tell you, there is no shame in feeling weary or exhausted. But God's invitation and God's promise is sure. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, it is happening right here, right now for us and you in Facebook Live. Right now, God is renewing us. My strength and your thanks be to God. I love you and ain't nothing you can do for me. Pray for me as I pray for you. And if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin and your time of weariness, today is a good day. Romans 10 and 9 says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day, thou shalt be saved. Somebody right now need to know him in the midst of their weariness and he will string you. Look what I said earlier now. He will string you for a higher a better and an eternal perspective. Perspective. This is Reverend Pastor Maurice McIntyre. I'll see you next week. Amen.